So, I bought a car, and I'm assuming that I already specified what that car is in the title of this video, but just to preface a little bit, um, the people that know me know that there was a time before BMWs when I was into Subarus, uh, before I was finally priced out of them. They just got to be worth more than they were worth, uh, in my opinion. And even though BMWs are objectively a better car, old BMWs that is, a better car in every tangible way, um, I still have a soft spot for Subarus, and I think I finally scratched that itch and bought the turbo nugget that I was looking for. Let's check it out. So here's what we're working with. It's a 2004 Subaru WRX wagon. Um, I'm, I hope the wind noise isn't too bad out here right now. I don't have my microphone on me. But uh, this bad boy has been sitting for an unknown period of time. Uh, the owner told me that it sat for a year and that it was his father's car and that his father passed away, sadly, uh, in 2020. What's true and what's not, it's hard to say, especially walking around in this car. Some things were well kept and other things were just severely neglected. All the tires are dry rotted and this one just straight up doesn't hold air. The other ones are barely clinging on and they are flat spotted to a point where they are almost totally useless. But uh, as you can see, this thing is terribly filthy. It's got its fair share of dents and um, the guy cleaned it off with what looked like a mop. Um, so yeah, the paint is suffering severely, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, it is a black car, so it's hard to, to keep those things clean. Um, I'm not a fan of black cars either, but for the price that I got this thing for, it is absolutely hard to complain. Um, the guy had it listed for $3,500 and I shrewdly negotiated him down to $2,700. Runs great. Um, drives, meh, uh, it's got a ton of clunks as you'll see shortly in the suspension. It was up around Baltimore um, and Baltimore is, if you look at the roads, uh, pretty much a third world country. So it's, <laughs> this thing got a beating suspension wise, uh, but this car is totally stock, which is why I bought it. Well, one of the reasons, besides it being cheap. Um, I really did not want to buy a modified WRX under any circumstances. There's the hood latch. Because that just means that it was someone else's toy to rag on and I'm getting their sloppy seconds. Uh, but yeah, this is what we're working with, stock WRX. Nothing really to write home about. Um, also, as you'll see, there's a couple of issues under here. Uh, it leaks oil out of the valve cover gaskets, which is a common problem. Um, it's just the fact that the way the exhaust manifold and stuff is ran, that those leaky gaskets drip right onto the exhaust and you have nice bluish white smoke coming up through your hood scoop, uh, which isn't really a good look. Uh, that kind of reduces your street cred, but uh, what you gonna do? Um, also the idler for the AC belt uh, just kind of grenaded itself, it, like exploded. Never really seen that before. And the belt also deleted itself. That was a little, test drive extravaganza right there but uh yeah now I do want to take this thing for a quick test drive and I'll take you along of course uh, but we got to do a couple things before that firstly the oil is absolutely disgusting so we got to change that real quick and the transmission oil is also very low um, so I'm assuming that's original and it's just been leaking out slowly over time this car is 168,000 miles on it by the way so she's getting up there in mileage uh, but not too bad and I credit that to it being stock. But regardless, before we test drive this car, I'm gonna change both the oil and the transmission oil, and then we'll take her around the block. So I got this puppy up on ramps, and would you look at that? We've already got a coolant leak. Um, <laughs> classic. Uh, it's not too bad though, it's just this end of the upper radiator hose dripping down, and then it's running down the front side of the engine. Um, just things that happen to cars that have been sitting I'm hoping I can just tighten up that hose clamp and it'll quit leaking, so we'll do that real quick. So this is what all we're putting into this car today. Uh, I've got Mobile One 5W30 engine oil. Um, this is what I put in all of my cars. It works for me, whatever works for you. I'm sure it works for you just fine. Uh, and I've also got Mobile One filter. Uh, and got this Valvoline full synthetic 75W90 gear oil. 
Um, this has a limited slip additive, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I couldn't find any fully synthetic oil for a reasonable price without this additive. And it seemed like people weren't having any issues with it. Uh, it's probably not the best for your synchros, but until something better comes along, this is what's gonna be in my transmission, and I guess you'll find out how well it works for me down the line. So anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and get started by just changing the engine oil, and we'll go from there. That puppy's tight. Oh. Alright, there it is. I think it was just a little bit of a little bit of oxidation, you know? Because once it broke loose, it's nice and loose. Go ahead and try and break this oil filter off here. It's all covered in oil, uh, and I'm assuming that's oil that's dripping from the valve cover gaskets onto the head and onto the uh, filter here so I'm assuming that's my only leak because this oil pan is dry I've never seen a Subaru oil pan that's dry on the outside and I mean granted I haven't seen very many nice Subarus not that this is a nice one but <laughs> that's dry Look at the state of this oil. That is disgusting. That is long overdue. Yikes. All right, now I'm gonna be that guy and I'm gonna go ahead and pre-fill the oil filter. Moving on to the transmission oil. There we go. This actually looks relatively new, so maybe this was unnecessary. It was awfully low though, was the concerning thing. Yeah, that looks new. I don't know what I was talking about. Well, I guess I could have gotten away with just topping this thing off. There's a fair amount of sludge on the plug, but nothing crazy, nothing abnormal, no big chunks. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just cap it. I'm not sure why it's low. I guess someone just underfilled it. As you can see, the underside of this transmission is nice and dry, so I don't think that it's been leaking out now that I'm looking at it. I'll go ahead and refill it, and at least I'll know what's in it. Uh, that's worth something, at least, I guess. Go ahead and pull the dipstick out. Uh, this is where you're supposed to fill it from, so that's what I intend to do. This is much harder than I thought it was going to be. I cannot see the, the dipstick tube at all because of our freaking turbo. All right, I'm going to have to get where you are. Are you serious? Man, who did this? Who designed this? All right, <laughs> got a piece of tubing. I'm gonna try this. Alright, so far so good. This is gonna take a while. Man, this would be so much easier if I could just fit a funnel in there. <laughs> Gotta roll this thing up like a tube of toothpaste. Alright, there's one tube out of almost four. I'll go ahead and do the rest off camera because my battery is about to die. Uh, and then I'll get cleaned up and we'll take this thing for a test drive. Alright. 
It's getting real hot and there's no AC, so let's make this quick. Seatbelt's even squeaky. Man, this thing's a whole hoopty. So the clutch is good and the drivetrain's nice and tight. As you might be able to hear already, there's quite a bit of clunking going on. And I'm pretty sure a lot of that is the tie rod end uh, in the front right. Yeah, you can really hear it now. But, uh, cause yeah, you can definitely feel that that's loose. And this car came with a whole bunch of new parts, among which were tie rod ends. So that's why I think it's a safe assumption that that's definitely a big culprit. Uh, there's also a CV axle that came with the car that I already have found why. Um, the front right CV axle is also bad, or the front left, I don't remember which. Uh, but one of them, the boot's gone bad and it's already making noise. There's a CV axle, don't know if you can hear that there. Yep. I don't know what you're gonna be able to pick up on camera, it's just awful loud in here. There's so many noises, it's hard to pinpoint any which one, uh, especially through a microphone and whatever you're listening to it on. But, uh, <laughs> no, she needs some love. Uh, the engine runs great, transmission shifting great, nice and quiet. And it's, it's nice and tight, there's no slop in any of the mounts. There's no bucking or anything of any kind. Um, so I know that someone took care of that because these always have like a sloppy, uh, whatever that upper mount is, I can't remember what it's called. But yeah, this thing's definitely got its fair share of clunks. And the flat spotted tires aren't helping anyone's case either. Uh, the ride isn't great right now. Um, but we'll hit one thing at a time and um, we'll see where things go. I would like to sort of restore this car. I don't know to what extent just yet. Uh, it depends on what I run into along the way, honestly. Uh, and the, for the price I got it for, I'm not worried about being able to get my money back out of it. And uh, But hopefully I can make something out of it and maybe own it and drive it around for a little while before needing to, to really sell it. Because um, it would be cool to keep around. getting on it too much um, but it is plenty quick the turbo built boost uh, how well I don't know it probably needs rebuilt uh, but first I'm gonna do the timing belt and stuff just because you know it's an unknown I just want to get that out of the way so that I don't have to worry about it and then I'm gonna do the valve cover gaskets so it's not making nice bluish white smoke anymore and then at that point I think I'll start working on the loose suspension bushings. Hopefully it's just those tie rod ends. Because if I can get away with just that, that would be pretty sweet. <laughs> oh, it's just cool hearing a turbo. <laughs> like naturally aspirated is great and all, but I don't know. There's something fun about it in a really goofy kind of way. But anyway, I'll be doing a little series of videos on this, I guess, and um, if you want to tag along to see what all I do to it, uh, feel free to subscribe and, you know, like the video, all that stuff, yada yada. I don't have a whole lot of Subaru stuff on the channel, but I do have more coming, especially with this thing. I've also got a 1990 Subaru Legacy where I, I'm putting a couple videos together for that. So if that's interesting at all, uh, feel free to check that out. But other than that, yeah, this is what we're working with on this car and uh, it'll be cool to see what I can make out of it because Man, I've wanted one of these for a long time and hopefully this one doesn't let me down too badly. I haven't had a whole lot of luck in the past, so we'll see. All right, I'm cooking. <laughs> Time to go edit this video. Thanks for watching.